In the far northwest of America, winter comes down hard. It's the perfect place to train the military how to survive and evade capture. So we just crashed, okay? What are the first things that you think you'd want to do as soon as you hit the ground? Getting away fast from a downed aircraft is called escape and evasion. Not easy in over a meter of snow. This is SEER training, standing for survival, evasion, resistance and escape. Human shape silhouette. The U.S. Air Force has been putting its air crews through it ever since the Korean War. But since 9-11, there is a new urgency to this training. I think due to the, the current conflict, the global war on terrorism that we're in right now, the, uh, the battlefield's changed. And uh, the people who are getting isolated have also changed. It's not just that pilot over Vietnam being shot down and held in Hanoi. It's a lot of other things now. Uh, we're dealing with people that aren't conventional. They, don't, they didn't sign the Geneva Conventions. Getting up into these forests to see the training was a challenge in itself. Borrowing a snowmobile was the only practical option. For most of these recruits, the forest is an alien world. With less than a thousand calories inside them today, they're slowing down and having trouble even building a fire. No, oh, it's very challenging. Very challenging. I'm not used to the snow. I grew up kind of in the desert in Arizona. It's very foreign to me. What's the most challenging bit of it? Uh, the uphill through about four feet of snow and then 80 pounds on your back. What you say? Clothing. Clothing. Shelter. Tonight, the recruits will be taught how to trap, humanely kill, then skin these rabbits. Just make friends with them and everything. Tomorrow, they'll be eating moose. But this course has been spared the worst of the survival delicacies. Uh, some of the less attractive things uh, you'll eat could be anywhere from insects. Probably the worst, uh, in my opinion, would be uh, slugs, uh, just for sources of protein. In some environments, uh, tropical environments, you may just have uh, plant sources, fruit. You might not have a lot of protein. So uh, a lot of worms, a lot of slugs, a lot of... A lot of bugs we like to uh, get these guys eating just to sort of tone down those aversions. Uh, so they've done it once, it's not as bad the second time when they try it. Learning how to survive in a hostile terrain while being pursued by an enemy is the key skill being taught here at the US Air Force SEER School in the mountains of the Pacific Northwest. Because of the intensity of ongoing combat operations in Afghanistan and Iraq, the number of recruits going through this course is growing every year. Back on base, the man who runs all the U.S. Air Force survival training from Alaska to Florida has learned it the hard way, spending more than 20 years on special operations. The most important thing is confidence. I can put you in a variety of very stressful environments in that you have the faith and confidence. You don't lose faith in your fellow military member. You don't lose faith in your God. You don't lose faith in your country that we will do everything we can to get you out in that you know that. We train to that level of skill and uh, that's critical to anybody coming back from any type of survival or isolated situation. The Air Force would not show us their resistance training. It's classified secret. But they did show us the rite of passage many air crew must now endure. Here in this indoor pool is where they teach the stress inoculation part of SEER training. It's how they train air crew to escape from an aircraft that's ditched in the sea. For the students behind me, they're about to undergo one of the most terrifying experiences of their lives. Above a pitch black indoor pool with simulated lightning, 20 recruits are hoisted up in a mock up of a helicopter fuselage. There's a storm building, the chopper's losing power. They're told to prepare to ditch in the sea. They've got seconds to escape from the submerged cabin, then swim to the life rafts. The instructors pummel them with cold, high pressure water. Someone's gone overboard and has to be rescued before they can radio their position. But the exercise is stopped early. One recruit has had a panic attack, believing she was drowning, and she's had to be pulled out of the water. Her future in the Air Force is now in doubt. The whole jumping into the water in the dark, in the storm, it just reminded me a lot of when I had experiences with near drowning, and it just completely and totally could not even think about anything else than getting out of the water. Outside, it's minus eight degrees, and the next batch of recruits are learning how to be rescued from the air. Parts of survival school can look almost fun. But America has no shortage of enemies, and with nearly a quarter of a million US troops deployed on operations around the world, 
the instructors at Sear School are in for a busy time. Frank Gardner, BBC News at Fairchild Air Force Base in Washington State.